with advancements in science and medicine, we understand so much more about nutrition now than we ever did, but there's a lot of information out there. So our guest this evening will help us sort it out. She's a registered dietitian nutritionist for St. Joseph Mercy Health Systems, Michigan Heart and Vascular Institute. She teaches about the benefits of adding more plant-based foods to our diet. Our partner with us on this presentation is Veg Michigan, and we have Olivia here that will fill you in on a little bit about their organization and what they can offer. And it's my pleasure to introduce Olivia and Chantel Singer. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Sheila. And hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Um, and thank you so much to the Ypsilanti District Library for having us and hosting this with us tonight. My name is Olivia and I'm the Media and Outreach Manager at Veg Michigan. Uh, just a little bit about Veg Michigan. We are the largest nonprofit in Michigan focused on promoting the benefits of plant-based eating. We put on educational programs like this one, host the Michigan Veg Fest, send out a newsletter at the start of every month. We have a YouTube channel with cooking videos and more. And our newest venture is a giveaway program that encourages members of the community to try plant-based foods for the first time for free. And I'll talk more on that later at the end of the presentation. I'll let you know how you can sign up to try a free bag of popular plant-based foods for yourself. We're excited to be partnering with the Ypsilanti District Library for an upcoming giveaway. So definitely stay tuned to learn more about that. And uh, here in front of you, you see is our website if you wanna check us out and learn more about our work. I've also listed all of our social media. We promote all of our upcoming events, do monthly raffles where you can win prizes from local businesses, highlight our favorite places to find plant-based food around Michigan and much more. So definitely give us a follow and check that out if you're interested. And lastly, if you like what you see tonight and wanna support our work, the best ways to do that are to either make a donation or to become a member. If you're thinking of becoming a member, the basic membership is only $20 a year and it includes a ticket to next year's Veg Fest, which is the largest plant-based event in Michigan. And the $40 membership includes a Veg Fest ticket plus a gift of your choice, which can either be a subscription to Veg News, the most popular magazine focused on plant-based eating, or a Veg Michigan t-shirt featuring our new logo. So any support you're able to give us is greatly appreciated. And you can become a member by clicking join in the menu on our website and make a donation by clicking donate. Just go to vegmichigan.org, like you see right there. And I'm actually gonna put in the chat as well, a link to go directly to our membership page. If you are interested in uh, joining us for Veg Fest next year, we're really excited about finally being able to have it next year. And as I said, if you become a member, you get a free ticket to that, which is a great event. So definitely check that out. Um, and just a couple of notes before we get started, we will be doing a Q&A at the end. So please utilize the chat box throughout the presentation and ask questions at any time. I'll keep track of the questions asked throughout and Chantal will answer them all at the end. So please just keep yourself on mute so we can give our full attention to the presentation. And uh, lastly, we have a very short survey that I'll share at the, in the chat at the end of the presentation. If you would take just a couple of minutes to fill it out for us, that'd be great. We'd love to hear your feedback. And now Sheila already gave a wonderful introduction to Chantal. So we're so happy to have her here with us. She's gonna talk all about plant-based nutrition and take it away Chantal, thanks so much. Yeah, thank you, Olivia. Thank you, Sheila. Really happy to be here and share um, all this great information about plant-based eating. Now, this presentation is really going to be perfect for beginners, so people that are just kind of learning about plant-based nutrition uh, for the first time. Although, if you're farther along in your plant-based journey, uh, this will still be a good presentation. You might get some new ideas of uh, new recipes or things to make or learn something that you might not have known before. So, I do want to create a little bit of community today with uh, using the chat box. So if everyone could uh, take a moment to write in the chat box, curious um, if you're a beginner or if you're farther along in your plant-based journey, um, maybe say beginner or advanced or how far along you are uh, and kind of see who's here. Middle of the path, okay, awesome. Thanks, Carol. More advanced, Alan, awesome. Love to hear it. Middle, okay. Got some more experienced people here. Uh, 
Kitty says beginner, but both daughters have been vegan for many years. Oh, I love that. Great. So influence each other. Uh, a couple beginners. Great. Looks like we got a pretty good mix of everyone here. So uh, thanks for sharing your responses. Uh, I do want to give a little um, uh, info about the pictures that you're going to see throughout the presentation. I apologize if you get some cravings or get hungry. Um, there's going to be a lot of delicious looking food throughout the presentation. And uh, while we'll dive deeper into specific food groups, most of the pictures are of what a meal or a snack could look like um, to be a little bit more practical with it. So what we see here up front is uh, chipotle cauliflower tacos. So that's a cashew chipotle sauce on top. And then uh, in the middle is some fresh green grapes. And off to the right is a red lentil veggie soup. All super delicious. So here we go, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the outline for today is that I'm going to talk a little bit more about myself and what I do, and then I want to define lifestyle medicine before we dive into plant-based eating because lifestyle medicine, or sorry, plant-based eating is just one pillar of um, how to achieve overall um, good health and well-being. And then we're going to explore blue zones briefly. So blue zones are geographical areas of the world where uh, people are living some of the longest, healthiest, and happiest lives. So uh, we're going to yeah, check out what they're doing. And then uh, I want to differentiate between different types of plant-based eating. So you may have heard the words vegan, plant-based, whole food plant-based. So I'm just going to go over a quick kind of definition of each of those. And then we'll dive into the specific foods and uh, foods and beverages to include, as well as kind of the health benefits of eating those sprinkled in. I'm going to um, give us one day sample meal plan of what more of the whole food plant based eating uh, could look like. And then we're going to go over some uh, other plant based uh, alternative products. So kind of meat alternatives, dairy alternatives, uh, seafood alternatives like that. And then uh, finally, we'll, I'll talk about some of my top tips for transitioning to plant-based eating and uh, finally we'll go over some uh, other educational resources. All right, so a little bit about me. Uh, I spent the majority of my career at U of M uh, in childhood weight management and uh, researching childhood obesity. More recently, I've switched over to uh, cardiac rehab. I'm at St. Joe's uh, Michigan Heart and Vascular Institute, where uh, the program is focused on predominantly plant-based eating. So um, I love what I do every day. I cook in clinic and uh, I just see how big of an impact that uh, whole food plant-based eating can have on um, uh, the human body every each and every day. Um, so I, I love what I do. And um, I've been vegan for two and a half years now. I've been vegetarian for about five years. Um, so it did take me a little while to to kind of fully transition over. Um, the Forks Over Knives documentary is definitely what uh, motivated me or inspired me to dive deeper into the work of some of the leaders of the plant-based movement like Dr. Greger, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Khan, Dr. Esselstein, um, and, and yeah, it's, just, I've, um, I learn more even every single year. And so I'm really happy to, uh, share with everybody today, uh, what I've learned. So, like I said, I wanted to touch on, uh, the pillars of lifestyle medicine. So, uh, whole food plant-based eating is really just one pillar, uh, not to forget all the other pillars, like, uh, getting daily, uh, physical activity, uh, finding ways to manage stress. Uh, avoiding uh, toxic substances, uh, getting adequate sleep, and then forming and maintaining positive relationships. So I did want to utilize the chat box here too. Um, you might see these, these pictures here are kind of the extension of the about me. So uh, activities that I love to do are uh, rock climbing and cycling. Uh, definitely been cycling a lot more now that it's uh, really nice out. So I've been having a lot of fun with that. And I do road biking and gravel biking. So I'd love to hear uh, all of you what, uh, what is your favorite activity or um, form of exercise? Or what is something that you might wanna try new? So that's another uh, recommendation I typically give is um, always finding an activity that is fun for you to do and something you look forward to. So um, go ahead and throw in the chat uh, how you like to move your body. Walking and weight training, says Beth. Kitty says swimming and yoga, awesome, love yoga. Walking and running, yeah, walking is really great exercise. Uh, dog walking, 
as warm up for gym. Awesome. Ooh, ice hockey, triathlons. Wow. There we go. Good stuff. Well, thanks for sharing, everybody. So I mentioned blue zones, right? Blue zones are areas of the world where um, there's the most reported centenarians. So people living over 100 years old, free of chronic disease. And these areas have some of the lowest rates of chronic disease uh, around the world. So researchers went into these areas to see uh, what, what are these people doing? And they found uh, really similar, there's really similar pillars to what we just went over with uh, lifestyle medicine, but they kind of get a little bit more specific. So the first one up top is moving and moving naturally. So uh, people in blue zones, um, they're not really pumping iron at the gym a lot. They're uh, just getting activity through their, um, through their daily life and a lot of walking. They tend to walk over 10,000 steps a day. And then right outlook is a pillar that includes a purpose. So having a purpose for why you're here and uh, downshifting is of some form of like kind of stress management too. So whether that be napping, taking a nap, uh, doing meditation or prayer uh, or yoga, some sort of uh, stress reduction. And then eating wisely is the pillar we're, of course, going to talk more about today. And that plant slant goes toward um, uh, roughly 90 to 95% um, whole plant foods are eaten by people in the blue zones, uh, actually 100% in some cases. So um, very powerful stuff there. The 80% rule refers to one area in Japan uh, where they push the plate away. They practice a habit where they push the plate away when they're about 80% full. It generally takes about 15 to 20 minutes for our stomachs to tell our brains that we're full. So that's where that um, kind of rule comes in handy with um, more mindful eating and slowing down the rate of eating to give our bodies kind of a, a chance to uh, catch up with our hunger and fullness cues. Uh, one at five was one region in Italy, I believe, that was a um, uh, an organic red wine and uh, no more than two drinks a day for men and one drink a day for women. And this was done uh, in a social aspect as well. And then uh, connecting is that next pillar. So uh, that goes along with positive relationships, putting loved ones first and really having a sense of community with people who uplift you and support you. Okay, so like I said, you may have heard some of the um, words that mean uh, vegan, plant-based, whole food, plant-based. They're all pretty synonymous, but uh, just slight differences that I'll go over, uh, which this um, diagram kind of really spells out really nicely. But a whole food, plant-based diet is one that we're going to kind of be talking out about first, and then we'll talk about more of those processed vegan products that go along into a plant-based diet. So, um, of course, whole food, plant-based eating is... Um, a way of eating that includes minimally processed whole plant foods. So this includes fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, and seeds. And then a plant-based diet includes all those foods, but it also includes more of the highly processed plant foods. So things that might have oils or processed um, like white flour or uh, added sugars and things like that. And then a vegan diet is also synonymous with both of those words as well. Um, but vegans tend to extend their compassion towards animals uh, through goods and services as well and not just food. Okay, so this is one of my favorite, just really simple um, diagrams. If anybody's heard of the USDA MyPlate, this is, it's kind of the new food pyramid, and this is the vegan version. So uh, ideally, we have half the plate fruits and vegetables, a quarter of the plain be grains with a focus on whole grains or starchy vegetables, and then a quarter of the plate being uh, some source of plant-based protein, and then not forgetting about uh, calcium-rich sources, uh, plant sources of food as well. And typically I recommend having about four or five food groups for meal times, and then two or three food groups for snacks, just so that we can get a variety of nutrients and um, get a lot of good energy to um, last throughout the day. And, oh, and this is the vegetarian resource group. Um, it's a free guide, it's online as well for anybody who wants it. And this is also free, Dr. Greger's uh, Daily Dozen. So this is an app actually, which is really easy just to kind of check off what, um, what you eat each day. And uh, he says, these are all the foods we should ideally uh, include for optimal health and longevity. And those are uh, beans, berries, fruits, cruciferous vegetables, greens, other vegetables, uh, 
nuts, flax seeds, spices, and then he also includes exercise and beverages as well. And kind of we'll dive deeper into uh, all these food groups here as well. All right, so the first food group uh, we're chatting about is fruits. This is personally my favorite food group. Uh, ideally, we eat the rainbow. So we want to eat all different types of colors. Uh, each different color is gonna offer slightly different nutrients. Uh, so the CDC recommends actually trying to get at least five different colors of fruits and vegetables each day to uh, meet our needs. All fruits are on the table. Um, they all are, are awesome choices. Uh, what we see off to the, the right there is a mix of uh, blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries, personally my favorite fruit. Uh, we want to choose mostly whole fruits and then avoid and limit fruit juices because Whole fruits have, they come packaged with, you know, all the vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and then dietary fiber. Dietary fiber is uh, what's most important for helping regulate those natural sugars coming through. But unfortunately, with fruit juice, we lose that fiber and uh, the juice will spike blood sugar just like lemonade or pop might well. So uh, best to go for those whole fruits and lots of awesome ways to eat fruits. I mean, fruit salad, just eating fruit on its own, grab an apple or banana. All you got to do is peel it. Uh, fruit is great in oatmeal or in cereal, on salads, uh, in smoothies, uh, you name it. So I'd love to hear uh, what everyone's favorite type of fruit is or and or what is your favorite way to eat fruit? And mine are definitely uh, berries, if you um, didn't catch that one. Bananas and smoothies, awesome. Yep, me too. I think I have bananas every single day in smoothies. So I'm with you there. Oh yeah, frozen, yeah, frozen fruit is great to utilize too. Um, especially because things like berries do go bad, tend to go bad um, quicker than fruits like apples or something. Uh, so lots of bananas, berries, ooh, nectarines, awesome. Ooh, frozen blueberries in the oatmeal is really fun. It turns the oatmeal purple. I love that. All right, thanks everyone. All right, so next food group is vegetables. So again, we wanna eat the rainbow, get a variety of colors. And as Dr. Greger mentioned, there's three different types of vegetables we wanna focus on. So cruciferous means cross-bearing and just that refers to the type of plant species, but these are really powerful cancer fighters. So we kind of differ um, divvies up, them up into their own group. This includes things like uh, broccoli, bok choy, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and then leafy greens are also in their kind of own category because um, they're just super nutrient rich and they're also high in calcium, some of those deep dark leafy greens. So things like spinach, collard greens, Swiss chard, um, arugula are really good uh, choices. Other vegetables, Totally not limited to those lists. There's thousands of different um, vegetables, hundreds of thousands of different vegetables out there. So um, just to name a few, asparagus, beets, zucchini, carrots, parsnips, uh, all, all awesome choices. So we see off to the right here, a picture of a salad. So the vegetables are Swiss chard and beets. And then there's some nuts and seeds on top. And then that pictured was a balsamic vinegar uh, dressing. So lots of ways to eat vegetables, right? We can kind of add vegetables to pretty much anything. Pasta dishes, salads, stir fries, sandwiches, pizza, uh, tacos, burritos. Uh, we can kind of fit vegetables into um, most, most meals. Uh, my favorite way to eat vegetables is uh, probably soups or salads. I, I really love soups and salads. And I'd love to hear... Uh, what everyone else's favorite vegetable is or a vegetable they want to eat more of or what's your favorite way to eat vegetables. Another salad lover, awesome. Yeah, it's so great with salads because you, and same with soups, like you can really just throw together a mix of a ton of different things and uh, it's great. Oh, collard greens, awesome. I think I had seen the other day, uh, one cup of collard greens has just as much calcium as a cup of cow's milk. So pretty powerful stuff. Uh, vegetables roasted or steamed, awesome. All right, thanks everyone. 
So lots of benefits from fruits and vegetables. Of course, they're high in water and they're high in fiber. <clears throat> so they're super hydrating. They're great for weight management. They're great for boosting the immune system with all those vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and really just uh, great for longevity and reducing overall risk for disease. <clears throat> And next category we've got is whole grains. So whole grains are grains that go through little uh, to no processing. On the other hand, we have refined grains. So refined grains are things like white bread, white pasta, white rice, and we lose um, a lot of fiber and a lot of vitamins, a lot of minerals and a lot of protein um, in those types of grains. So it's best to go for whole when possible and lots of different options, not limited to this list, but some common ones are oats, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, brown rice, wild rice, uh, farro, quinoa, barley, uh, popcorn, corn, uh, lots of great options for whole grains. My favorite grain is definitely oats. I eat oats every single day, whether it be in smoothies or, or oatmeal. And the picture off to the right here is a nice bowl of oatmeal with some peanut butter in it, some soy milk, uh, and then it's topped with blueberries, banana, and some ground flaxseed. So I'd love to hear from everyone else. What is your favorite grain or what is a grain here uh, that you might want to try new? I also want to say I love farro. Farro is another one of my favorite grains. <clears throat> Sprouted. Belt oatmeal, interesting. Farro, yep. For anybody that hasn't had farro, it's a, um, it's really similar to rice. It cooks like rice. It absorbs water um, just by simmering for about 20 minutes. And you can find it at most typical grocery stores, Kroger, uh, Meyer, uh, Fresh Time, Whole Foods. Oh yeah, Ezekiel bread's really good too. Ezekiel bread is a sprouted grain bread and that's gonna be found in the produce sector, sorry, not the produce, the freezer section of most grocery stores like Kroger, Meyer, Rush Time, uh, really good bread. Okay, so whole grains are a complex carb, meaning they've got a lot of dietary fiber to help regulate those um, carbohydrates and sugar coming through. Um, they're especially high in uh, B vitamins and other minerals as well. So really great for uh, long lasting energy. Um, like I said, controlling blood sugars and um, uh, digestive health as well with all that fiber. And the uh, whole grain that we see off to the right here is actually the corn tortilla. So it's, um, this is actually a forks over knives recipe that is awesome. It's the mango and black bean tacos. So definitely check out um, that website when you get a chance. All right, so plant-based protein. Uh, one of the biggest myths about going plant-based or vegan is that uh, we can't get enough protein, but this is um, so untrue. The average American typically only needs, uh, an average adult typically only needs about 50 grams of protein a day. And we can get this all through plant foods uh, very easily. So um, not limited to this list, um, these are high sources of protein, but even things like an apple has like a gram of protein, uh, potatoes have a few grams of protein. Uh, so it all, all adds up, but things like lentils and beans, um, can have more protein than, um, some uh, meats and dairy products. So uh, beans, there's tons of different beans to choose from, uh, black beans, chickpeas, uh, kidney beans, lentils, all different types, red, yellow, green, brown, um, nuts, lots of different types of nuts, uh, seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds, hemp parts, uh, soy foods like tofu, tempeh, edamame, all really great sources of protein. And then whole grains that I mentioned uh, before have good protein too, things like quinoa, um, oats, uh, whole wheat, wild rice, and then uh, vegetables, as I mentioned, like the potatoes have a few grams, even spinach um, does as well. So lots of great things to do with plant-based proteins. I mean, we can make, uh, you know, Mexican types of dishes like tacos, burritos with beans. Uh, we can make hummus, um, uh, lentils, lentil chili, lentil sloppy joes, lentil tacos, uh, nuts and seeds. What we see up to the right there is actually a vegan mac and cheese made out of a cashew sauce. So the, uh, the cheese, vegan cheese is cashews, uh, soy milk, nutritional yeast, uh, turmeric, and some other garlic powder, onion powder, some seasonings. Uh, so chock full of protein there. 
Uh, we can do trail mixes, seeds uh, in oatmeal or in smoothies, uh, nuts in smoothies, soy foods, like tofu and stir fries, tempeh is great in stir fries, uh, edamame is great as a snack. Uh, I could probably <laughs> talk for an hour just about different ways to eat these types of foods. Um, but definitely this vegan mac and cheese that you see off to the right here is probably um, one of my, let's like our go-to meals here uh, in my house. And uh, yeah, I, um, I'd love to hear from everybody else. What is your favorite type of plant-based protein or what would you like to try new? Tempeh and tofu, awesome. Tofu scramble and nuts, love it. Yeah, tofu scrambles are really, really good and really easy too. Pinto beans, chia and flax, awesome. Thanks everyone. All right, so plant-based proteins are um, really great sources of a protein. Of course, we can get all the essential amino acids that we need for building healthy muscles and tissues and um, performance and, and uh, healing and our immune system. It all plays a, a big role in. Uh, Plant-based proteins are also low in fat um, and, and saturated fat, which is really great for heart health and for diabetes as well. And it's also great for weight control, being um, very high fiber with a lot of these foods too. And the picture that you see off to the right is a teriyaki tempeh. So teriyaki tempeh with sesame seeds and then a um, little bit of brown rice. So the, uh, there's a little bit of protein coming from the brown rice and actually probably a small amount of protein coming from the broccoli too. So some steamed broccoli. Okay, so as I mentioned, we can get a lot of uh, calcium from different plant sources. Uh, like I mentioned, the collard greens um, being a really high source, all leafy greens, those dark leafy greens are really good sources. Uh, also unsweetened uh, calcium fortified nut milk. So soy milk is a really good source. Uh, almond milk, uh, oat milk. Oat milk's really creamy. It's probably one of my favorite tasting plant-based milks. I probably drink soy milk more just for the um, extra nutrition, um, but oat milk is really tasty. Uh, beans and lentils are a good source of calcium. Uh, chia seeds are a really good source of calcium. Figs, almonds, oranges. Uh, so it's good to get a variety of these types of foods in, but definitely those uh, leafy greens and beans are um, really big sources, so good to get in. And the picture that you see off to the right here is a um, kind of an Asian uh, bowl with um, uh, brown rice noodles, tofu, so the calcium's that tofu, it's where a lot of calcium is coming from there, still some calcium coming from the broccoli, and, um, and then there's some kind of fresh herbs in there as well. Super tasty. All right, so of course, calcium is good for our bones, right? Um, also good for our nervous system um, and uh, reducing risk of osteomalacia, right? Breaking down of bone when we're older. And there's tons of different types of plant milk. So I think I see someone poking in the chat already, but uh, if you go to the store and check out the aisles, there's tons of different nut milks. I mean, there's macadamia nut milk, there's um, cashew milk, there's flax milk, uh, like someone wrote in the chat, pea protein milk. So um, kind of experiment around, see what you, uh, what you like best. And definitely an awesome treat is what you see in the um, uh, right, um, of the photo there is a dark chocolate silk almond milk, super, super tasty. Okay, so uh, you saw on Dr. Greger's uh, Daily Dozen, the flax seeds. So one of the main reasons for that is because of the um, high amounts of omega-3 fatty acids that are in flax seeds. We can also find omega-3s in chia seeds, hemp parts, uh, walnuts, and algal oil as a supplement as well. And with flax seeds, we wanna get them ground because uh, we can absorb the nutrients a lot better than if they're kind of those whole seeds. So going for ground is best. And omega-3s are particularly helpful for reducing inflammation. Uh, they're also great for uh, brain health, eye health, and uh, heart health as well. 
And the picture that you see off to the right is of uh, chia seed pudding. So really easy to make. It's just nut milk with uh, chia seeds, a little bit of sweetener is optional. And uh, the chia seeds actually kind of jellify over time. So usually about a half hour or so. And um, they kind of create that pudding texture. So a uh, really nice snack or dessert or breakfast. All right, now herbs and spices. Uh, tons of herbs and spices, not limited to this list, but this is a great way to uh, get more flavor out of our food, right? So um, with a from Italian seasonings to like basil, oregano, um, parsley to kind of Mexican more seasonings with like cumin, cumin and chili powder and cayenne pepper, um, lots of other great uh, herbs and spices like turmeric, fresh and dried are all great options. Uh, with uh, dried, typically want to use about like half the amount that it calls for fresh in a recipe. And of course, as I mentioned, they're gonna it's gonna offer a lot of great uh, flavor and uh, great taste and aroma, kind of aesthetics to food, being really pretty, kind of bright green colors. Uh, but there's also a lot of nutrients in herbs and spices. So herbs and spices are packed with uh, powerful antioxidants, and so we really don't even need that much herbs and spices to get a a, a big benefit out of them. Um, yeah, other uh, uh, food group I want to talk about is probiotic foods and beverages. So these are foods and beverages that are fermented. So they have live active cultures that are really good for gut health. And uh, eating uh, foods like raw sauerkraut, kimchi, uh, other pickled vegetables, uh, tempeh, miso, sourdough bread if it's fresh baked, uh, and kombucha are all sources of um, some more of those probiotics. And off to the right there is uh, pickled beets. And then we've got some sauerkraut down here. And so of course, as I mentioned, it helps increase the good bacteria in the gut. Uh, probiotics are really good for gut health and uh, digestive health, as well as linked to a good immune system and good mental health. So not forgetting about condiments, right? Condiments are a great way to uh, flavor food, uh, making different sauces or marinades or dressings out of mustards, vinegars, soy sauce, salsas. Uh, nutritional yeast, lemon juice, uh, cashew based dressings, uh, and then added sweeteners and oils down there as well have an asterisk next to them just because the more oils and sugars that we use, the more that leans towards a plant based um, diet rather than whole food plant based diet. Uh, and the picture that you see off to the right here is of a, a vegan Caesar salad. So delicious. It's from the blog, Oh, She Glows. Go check it out um, and try it out if it looks good to you. It's a uh, cashew-based dressing, and I think it has kind of a, a, a good mix of things. Um, uh, lemon juice, capers, uh, uh, nutritional yeast, and you mentioned the cashew, maybe a little bit of soy sauce. And uh, it's a... Uh, vegan parmesan on top made of hemp and nutritional yeast. And I think this may be some almonds um, and then some chickpeas on top. Uh, of course, we want to think about some healthy beverages too. So uh, water, infused waters for people don't like water. So lemon water, berry water, um, herbal teas, coffee, uh, vegetable juices, um, smoothies, plant-based milk, lots of options for um, healthy beverages. And here's a little diagram from the, uh, this is from Harvard uh, Medical School for their recommendations on water intake per day. So this is based on age and uh, gender and um, uh, life uh, status. So they account for um, pregnancy and breastfeeding as well. Well, lots of um, important functions that uh, water has in the body. So good to kind of compare where you're at and, uh, uh, use some of those uh, healthy beverages that I mentioned in the last slide for um, up in those fluids. All right, so I kind of mentioned some of the benefits of whole food, uh, of eating these whole plant foods, but uh, when we follow a pattern of eating whole food plant-based from day to day, uh, research shows that it can um, help lower cholesterol, it can help 
help lower uh, blood sugars. It can help um, lower blood pressure, which is obviously all really good for um, heart health, for diabetes, not just treatment um, and, and management or prevention, but also um, reversing these conditions as well. So whole food plant-based eating has been shown to reverse a lot of these um, top chronic diseases that we, we have here in America. Um, also including uh, cancer, um, arthritis, and just in general, um, increasing um, mood, energy levels, and overall quality of life. So um, the, the benefits are really, really not limited when um, eating whole food plant-based. And the picture that you see up to the right here is an avocado chocolate pudding. Super delicious. Again, quick and easy. I'm all about the quick and easy um, whole food options. So this is an avocado, made with avocado, banana, cocoa powder, a little bit of sweetener optional, and then um, some raspberries on top. And here's a one day example. So these are all pictures that you've seen throughout the presentation. Uh, breakfast could be oatmeal with the berries, flax, soy milk, uh, and um, the peanut butter. Uh, morning snack could be some walnuts with uh, some fruit. Um, lunch option could be that chickpea salad sandwich that you see off to the right uh, with sweet potato fries and a pickle. And then uh, afternoon snack could be a green smoothie and some air pop popcorn. And then dinner could be the teriyaki tempeh that we saw with brown rice and uh, broccoli. So again, there's not measurements on here uh, because uh, I typically recommend not, not counting and numbers uh, or calories, although that can work for some people, but uh, Typically, I recommend focusing on the food choices and listening to our body's hunger and fullness cues as guides for when to start and stop eating because um, everybody's needs are different and they're going to be different uh, from day to day. So it doesn't have to necessarily be five or six small meals a day. Um, just got to kind of find what works best for you. All right, so as I mentioned, there's tons of different uh, plant-based uh, products that are on the market these days. Now, these are going to be what we're talking about is more processed products. So this is going to go more into the category of plant-based eating. These uh, types of foods that we're going to talk about are really great for transitioning to plant-based eating. So those who are finding a little bit tough time um, uh, cutting out the meat and dairy, uh, these, these foods can be great kind of transition foods, if you will. So, uh, for every single animal product or animal byproduct, I guarantee there is a vegan option <laughs> these days, uh, for beef, you may have seen the impossible burger or the beyond burger or Morningstar soy crumbles, um, chicken garden has some plant-based chicken nuggets. Uh, there's tons of other brands that have these vegan, um, options too. So not limited to what you see on here. Um, Beyond uh, Meat also has brats and sausages, breakfast sausages. Uh, barbecue jackfruit is really good. I found um, Whole Foods has uh, a kind of a prepackaged one of those. And uh, deli. So Tofurky makes a lot of deli slices. Uh, Field Roast makes a lot of um, good stuff. Light Life makes hot dogs. And then for dairy alternatives, again, every yogurt, milk, cheese, ice cream, butter, uh, there's a vegan option for all of it. And I will say the Ben and Jerry's, um, be careful with the Ben and Jerry's uh, non-dairy pints because they're super delicious. Um, cheese, follow, follow your heart, my Yoko, some of my favorite brands. Uh, we talked about cutting those all different uh, plant milks. There's plant yogurts too. So made from soy milk, made from almond milk, made from oat milk. Um, Personally, I like the plain uh, silk uh, yo uh, yogurt made from soy milk. Um, yeah, lots of different options. And then for seafood alternatives, so uh, there's uh, Sophie's Kitchen is a vegan tuna. Some of these you can find online too, um, if you can't find it in stores, but Gardein has fishless fillets. Um, you can make crabless cakes from Hearts of Palm. So that would be kind of a, um, a recipe to make other than a packaged product, but good to know. And then for egg alternatives, so you may have seen the just egg and uh, the picture off to the right is what the uh, product looks like. And it looks pretty similar to eggs, uh, right? It tastes pretty similar too, especially when you make it with uh, vegetables too. And uh, it kind of goes all really well together. Uh, I recently made an uh, tofu eggless salad. That was a, it doesn't taste like chicken blog. And, uh, 
it was made with a uh, vegan A's as the kind of vegan mayo too. Um, so that's really good option alternative. And then also uh, flax or chia egg I threw on there. So that would be a kind of whole food plant-based alternative to an egg for baking. So uh, you can mix flax or chia with water and then it will kind of jellify and make a thicker uh, mixture that's great for uh, a binder for baking. And then other pre-made or frozen meals, um, Amy's Kitchen, Sweet Earth Foods are making kind of burritos, bowls, mac and cheese. There's um, pizzas too uh, with non-dairy cheese or no cheese. And a lot of these foods are found at all different stores. So Aldi's, Kroger, um, even Target has some, Meyer, Whole Foods. And then looking online is really good too. So um, lots of things, especially for dry goods too. It's uh, easier to find some of those online. And some of my, these are some of my uh, top tips for going plant-based. The number one thing is to find your why. So what's the motivation for, or what's the reason that you want to go plant-based and kind of keep that motivation in the forefront of your mind, or even write it down on a sticky note or piece of paper where you're going to see it every day. Uh, so that can keep the um, kind of motivation going for choosing more plants and staying educated is really important too. So if there's a chronic disease that you have, or if there's a chronic disease that a family member has, or a chronic disease that you're trying to avoid that you're at high risk for, um, check out resources on how whole food plant-based eating or how plant-based eating um, can help those conditions because that can really be um, inspiring and educational and helpful as well. Uh, and then, or if it's the environment, you know, um, the environment or caring about animal welfare, um, you know, watch books, documentaries, um, podcasts, all that can help um, kind of foster that more motivation. And getting support is really helpful too. So it's easier to make a behavioral change when we do it with somebody else or someone is holding us accountable. So finding a friend or a family member, um, even if they don't want to fully, you know, dive fully into vegan or uh, plant-based eating, if they would just support you by eating one meal a week or two meals a week, um, that could be helpful too. Um, or finding groups online. So there's tons of different uh, plant-based and vegan groups on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, so check out those hashtags and check out those groups. Um, and then experimenting. So writing down what works, what doesn't work uh, is really helpful for um, finding what you like, right? So there, it's definitely going to be about experimenting, uh, getting creative in the kitchen, finding which preferences and which flavors you really like best. Uh, staying positive is really important too. So, um, negative self-talk will only make it harder, achieve, harder to achieve our goals. And, um, it, sometimes it does take a long time. You know, it doesn't always happen overnight. As I mentioned, it took me over a year to kind of fully transition. Um, so some people can do it overnight and some people it takes a little more, more gradual time. So whatever works best for you, um, it's important to stay positive throughout the journey. And uh, supplementing is very important. If you're diving all the way in, it's really important to get in uh, your B12. And uh, vitamin D is really important for a lot of people in Michigan in the winter months anyway, um, but also uh, really good to include as well. And here are tons of resources. So Olivia will be posting these um, books, recipe websites, documentaries, podcasts. And uh, as I mentioned before, if, uh, if you do have a chronic disease or like heart disease, diabetes, or if you have a family member who has a chronic disease, uh, like Alzheimer's or uh, heart disease, you name it, uh, cancer even, uh, find one of the resources that relates to that particular disease and uh, check it out because that can be really, really helpful. And these are my resources. So as I mentioned, um, I, I look to a lot of the leading doctors like Dr. Greger, uh, Dr. Dean Ornish, Dr. Khan, uh, Dr. Campbell, Dr. Esselstyn. And uh, yeah, that is all we have. So thank you everyone for uh, being here today and learning more about plant-based eating. I hope that um, inspired people to eat more plants and I'm really happy to take any questions that anybody has. Thanks so much, Chantal. That was wonderful as always. Um, I do have a quick announcement before we get to the Q&A, but first I wanna let everyone know that in the chat right now, I'm putting a link to a, um, a Google Doc that has all the resources um, and references that Chantal just mentioned on the last couple of slides. So that's there if you want you know, to save it for later. Uh, for future reference, definitely check that out. Um, 
And I know it looks like Pamela just asked um, the group, but maybe Chantal specifically, if anyone can suggest a podcast. Uh, so Pamela, there are a few podcast recommendations on that resource um, doc as well. And yes, yeah, so I just have a quick announcement before we get to the q and I want to tell you all a bit more about signing up for our completely free plant-based food giveaway that I mentioned earlier. So if you're not already vegan or plant-based, we encourage you to sign up for our free plant-based food giveaway. The giveaway bag includes Beyond Burgers, Just Folded Egg, Almond Milk, and other plant-based foods. So it gives you a great taste of a, of a variety of plant-based swaps. And of course, we agree with Chantal and will always encourage you to eat a diet of primarily whole plant-based foods. However, the foods you'll find in this bag are great swaps for the occasional times you do want to indulge in a slightly less healthy meal or snack. Um, so, you know, if you're just a beginner, which is what this program is for, these are great for you if you're trying to get off a beef burger and want to try something like the Beyond Burger. Um, like Chantal said, they're great transition foods. And as I mentioned in my introduction, we are so excited to be partnering with the Ypsilanti District Library to do a mass giveaway for Ypsilanti residents and library patrons. Uh, that's gonna be on Wednesday, June 2nd from four to 6 p.m., so two weeks from today. And the giveaway will take place at the Whitaker Road Library Branch, and you'll be able to just quickly drive into the parking lot and pick up your bag. Um, so I'll share the link in the chat for this giveaway, and uh, we'll be in touch with more information. Um, but just make sure to write Ypsilanti Library as the address when you sign up. Um, but you can you know, email with us if you have any questions about that. And if you're joining us tonight and you do not live in the Ypsilanti area, but you live in general around Southeast Michigan, please still sign up and we'll contact you to set up a time to deliver the bag right to your door. Uh, just will likely take a bit longer um, than just picking up at the Ypsilanti library. And if you live anywhere else in Michigan, I still encourage you to sign up and we will be in touch about if and when we're able to deliver to you if you live a bit outside of Southeast Michigan. And lastly, just to reiterate, this program is for non-vegans only, for people who've not already tried these items. And it's really meant to help people easily transition to eat more plant-based foods. So if you are already vegan or plant-based, or you've already tried these foods that come in the bag, please don't sign up so that we're able to get the bags to people completely new to these plant-based foods. However, if you're already vegan, but you have friends or family that live in the area and are not vegan or plant-based themselves, please show them this program and encourage them to sign up. Really, it's open to anyone new to plant-based. So I'm going to share a link to sign up for that program in the chat right now if you wanna check that out. Okay, and now we are ready for Q&A. It looks like we have a couple questions so far. And uh, Chantal, the first one is from Elizabeth. She says, most, most cheeses seem to be made with cashews and asks if you can suggest one that doesn't have them. She's allergic to cashews. Chantal? Did something happen? Um, I think we may have lost her. I don't no. see her on the list. Maybe she'll try to... Join oh us. no, she texted me. She said her internet went out. Oh, she's trying to reconnect right now. <laughs> okay. Oh no, of course. Let's give her, let's give her just a minute. Um, hopefully she's able to join back again. Let me see. Let me see if I can answer any of the questions. Uh, Pamela, you asked, will this resource list still be there when the meeting ends? Uh, yes, that, that Google Doc stays live all the time. So if you just copy the link or, you know, just pull it up as a tab, that will not be going anywhere. So you can access it at any point. Um, I'm back, Olivia. Back. Oh, wonderful. Okay, great. Now, and I have to use a hotspot now, but I got it. So we're good. No worries. Okay, awesome. Glad to have you back. 
Okay, so let's go with the q and A. I don't know if you heard the question, but I'll just say it again. So Elizabeth said, most cheeses seem to be made with cashews and asked if you can suggest one that doesn't have them because she's allergic to cashews. Oh yeah, such a bummer. I'm sorry to hear about that. Uh, but uh, I think Violife and I think the Whole Foods brand of vegan cheeses are made with, I think they're potato starch and coconut oil. I don't believe they have any cashew in them. And even follow your heart, I think, should be um, potato starch too. So um, check out those two. Um, and uh, I bet Whole Foods would probably have a bigger selection too to take a look at those labels for. Definitely. Um, okay, let me see. What do you suggest for someone who has minimal time to meal prep and cook daily? Yeah, so definitely using a lot of things like, um, so things like uh, steamable veggie bags or convenient fruits, um, nuts and seeds, things that you don't have to prepare as much um, would be uh, really, really helpful. Or if you can designate just one day a week um, or like, you know, a couple hours, no, sorry, not a day, but like a couple hours and try to knock out like two or three recipes in a couple hours. And that way you'll have um, those, you know, foods for um, the week or even doing things like, like soups or, in, or stir fries where you can utilize the freezer. So that way making like really big batches of them will last you for a really long time. Um, also just quick and easy recipes you could Google search things like overnight oats that you just kind of put it all together and it's kind of good to go um, uh, are really good tips too. Yeah, so hopefully that helps and gives you a head start. Absolutely. Um, the same person, uh, A, just said, also, how do you know how many calories to eat and how much protein to eat? Like how does each individual person get, a, get an idea of that? Yeah, so there's calculations you can um, uh, use or kind of guidelines you can use from um, the Dietary Guidelines of America, but uh, really, I don't tend, I tend not to focus on calories or numbers with my patients, um, unless people are really, you know, finding that that's helpful for them. I find that most people find that that's not as helpful, um, and focusing more on food choices rather than the calories. So the, the types of foods and trying to get more, more whole foods than, than, than the calories and our bodies are really smart. So our bodies do really know what we need. And it's just kind of about tuning into that, um, and, and, uh, practicing kind of mindful eating. It's really helpful for um, letting our bodies uh, know what to do with how much calories to eat. And um, as far as protein goes, so the, um, the RDA, so the recommended dietary allowance is um, technically like 0.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. So you could use that formula to calculate if you wanted, but um, the general recommendation I think is about 46 grams for on average for the average adult woman. And then the, the average adult male is about 56 grams. So um, the, the average between those is about 50 grams of protein for the average adult. And that's the, um, yeah, the recommend the RDA. So. Very nice. Okay. Um, James says cold pressed hemp oil as omega supplement, lots of calories, but good reviews from users. What's your opinion on this? Cold pressed hemp oil. Uh, you know, I haven't seen it as much in lots of calories, but good reviews from users. You know, I can't say I have a big opinion on it. I haven't um, looked too much into those, those supplements. Um, I don't know how many calories are, are in them, um, but typically the al like the alga oil supplements too, um, I'm sure it should be okay if it's got the DHA and EPA, I think about 250 milligrams is what we're going for. Um, so yeah, I'm sorry, I don't have like a hard opinion on it because I don't know exactly um, the type you're talking about. Hemp is good though. Definitely would be interested in trying that. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. Okay. Susan says, do you feel the eating style is expensive? What is your go-to when you're craving meat? Or what would you okay, recommend so as a go-to if you don't personally? I think that was two, I think that was two questions. So the first question <laughs> was, uh, <laughs> let's kind of break that up. Um, what was the first one again? The first question, um, was just talking about how expensive do you feel the eating style of being plant-based is expensive? 
That's a really good question. So you can go at like super, super cheap, but you can also go super, super expensive. And that depends on what types of food you're buying. So if you're buying uh, lots of those processed vegan products that we just kind of talked about, the vegan meats, the vegan cheeses, the, you know, vegan A's, um, the grocery bill can kind of um, uh, uh, creep up a little bit with those types of foods. But if we're buying more of the um, like oats, beans, rice, these are some of the cheapest foods we can buy. Um, especially compared to meat and dairy products. So um, yeah, sticking to more whole foods, buying in bulk. Um, it's really actually a really cost-effective way to eat. Absolutely. Absolutely agreed. Um, so her, her second question was, what is your go-to when you're craving meat? And again, if you don't crave meat anymore, if you have any suggestions. Oh yeah. I don't, I wouldn't say I really crave, I don't crave meat anymore. I kind of, meat has turned into like when I see actual meat, like I just think about the animal's life and the, um, uh, you know, the suffering that they go through. So I totally don't even like want to <laughs> look at meat when I see it. But, um, uh, as far as goes to the taste of it, you know, so I do eat like beyond burgers occasionally. Um, I've had those like plant-based chicken nuggets before. Um, so yeah, I would say those plant-based meat alternative products would be a good place to go if uh, you have those cravings but they will go away. <laughs> the more, um, the more you learn and the more you practice, um, and the more you experiment with different types of foods, um, those cravings should probably go away. Absolutely. And, uh, Susan, again, you know, if you are new to plant-based eating, which it seems like from your questions, you might be, I definitely encourage you to sign up for our plant-based giveaway program, and you'll be able to try the Beyond Burger through that, you know, it is one of those processed foods that are on the slightly more expensive side, but also as we encourage you to only eat it occasionally, you know, when you are craving the meat and want the transition food, that would definitely be a great go-to. So please sign up and, you know, try some of that for free. Um, okay, let me see. Uh, okay, someone said, I was also wondering if you have any suggestions on how to wash fruits and veggies. I've seen veggie wash at the store. Also read you can use a lemon juice or vinegar dilution. Interesting. So, um, I mean, what I learned in food, uh, or sorry, serve safe certification is uh, 15 to 30 seconds room temperature water uh, for fruits and vegetables. So that's actually just what I do. Pretty simple. Um, but I, I haven't heard of lemon juice or vinegar dilution. I'd be curious to, to look into that or even a veggie wash. I don't even know um, what that is either. So um, yeah, just I, I just do uh, room temperature water for about 15 seconds. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I don't use any specific kind of fruit or veggie wash either. Um, let me see. Okay, it looks like the last question right now, hopefully I'm not missing anything. Uh, yeah, someone just said, can you recommend a good vegetarian book that shows you how to make your own plant-based burger? Um, and there are some, you know, some recipe resources on the resource link that I shared as well, some different websites and books that you can definitely check out. I don't know, Chantal, mm -hmm. if you make your own plant-based burgers ever, if you have any specific book or recipe recommendations. Um, I don't know any particular books, but if you just Google, so like vegan pl or plant-based burger, um, you'll probably get a ton of hits and a ton of different options to look through. And then you can really find um, what kind of sparks your, your taste buds and um, what sounds good to you, so. Absolutely, there's such a wide variety of different uh, plant-based burgers. Mm -hmm. check for okay Anne is saying Pinterest is a great place to search for recipes like that mushrooms walnuts quinoa all good things that um burger can have oh and Sheila says the library has lots of books to check out so you know head out or uh, look at the the Ypsilanti district library they have lots of great resources so definitely check those out as well and it's looking like that is all of the questions for now. Um, and it's a bit after eight. So thank you so much everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, real quick, I am going to put um, the Veg Michigan survey in the chat box. It's like maybe four or five questions. Um, if you just take a moment to fill that out, we really appreciate it. 
Um, and thank you so much to Sheila and the Ypsilanti District Library for hosting this with us tonight. And I'll turn it back over to you, Sheila, if you have anything else to say. Just a big thank you to both of you for your time. It's been a great presentation. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you everyone for coming. Thanks so much for joining us. And as always, you know, feel free to reach out to us at Veg Michigan or, or Chantal um, at Plant Based Nutritionist on Instagram. We're always here to help answer questions and help you along your plant based journey. Thanks, everyone. Have a Thank great you. day. Bye, Bye. guys.